Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to discuss some topic that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past, and more. I got this on various sources. Please check the description to know more, there are many interesting topics there, and not all of them can be covered here. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite of <laughs> the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Back to the Future. In real time. Viktor Stepanovich Grebenikov was a self-proclaimed Russian scientist, biologist, entomologist and paranormal researcher, best known for his claim to have invented a levitation platform, which operated by attaching dead insect body parts to the underside. Grebenikov wrote detailed accounts of his experiences flying over the Russian countryside using his levitation device. These flying experiences as well as his reported observations of other paranormal phenomena, usually involving insect nests or parts, appear in his self-published book, entitled, My World. The mention of the magnetic torus field and the either kind of helps with the bigger picture. Is this why they used the scarab beetle in art and jewelry? What do you think? The Empire State Building could be a Tartarian building. It was built in just one year, March 1930 to May 1931. That itself is beyond belief. It has an astounding 102 floors. Note that this was during the Great Depression, between 1929 to 1939, when 40 million dollars were spent in its construction. Sounds like a fairy tale. The next time, a taller building was built, was 40 years later, in 1970. World Trade Center demolished in 2001 when it again became the tallest building in New York till 2012 when One World Center was built. A replica of the building is etched on the wall which shows rays emanating from the top of the tower, signaling that it was an electricity generating device. The interiors are stunning with glazed stones on the floor and the wall, creating a mesmerizing effect, and why the name, Empire State? Which empire? When was it actually built? Whose empire was it? Tartarian? What do you think? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The Demaction House. Richard Buckminster Fuller. The Demaction House was a futuristic dwelling invented by the architect and practical philosopher R. Buckminster Fuller. In 1920, Fuller wished to build a sustainable autonomous single-family dwelling, the living machine of the future. Although never built, the Demaction's design displayed forward-thinking and influential innovations in prefabrication and sustainability. The hexagonal house was an earthquake and storm-resistant structure, supported by a central pole from which cables would be suspended, allowing the outer walls to be non-bearing. The design also shows wind turbines on the roof, and an extensive system of cisterns to collect and recycle water. For the bathing unit, Fuller patented the Demaction bathroom, a shower that required only one cup of hot water, and a toilet that consumed no water at all. Fuller once said, we must do away with the absolutely specious notion that everybody has to earn a living. It is a fact today that one in 10,000 of us can make a technological breakthrough capable of supporting all the rest. The youth of today are absolutely right in recognizing this nonsense of earning a living. 
We keep inventing jobs because of this false idea that everybody has to be employed at some kind of drudgery because, according to Malthusian Darwinian theory, he must justify his right to exist. So, we have inspectors of inspectors and people making instruments for inspectors to inspect inspectors. The true business of people should be to go back to school and think about whatever it was they were thinking about before somebody came along and told them they had to earn a living. What do you think? Look at these German coins. In the sky is either an all-seeing eye or the word of God I believe. The vast majority of not only these coins, but a ton of other ones, also have the sun or the all-seeing eye in the sky. The weird part is that some of these specific coins have something else in the sky. It looks like the old ones have the airship, and the new ones just have a figurative representation. That ship in the sky looks far too meticulously illustrated to be figurative itself. Looks like they replaced the original literal depiction with the all-seeing eye and the word of God. What if that airship was the original object in the sky before the all-seeing eye? And what if that airship was the original all-seeing eye? Think about just how many old coins and illustrations depict the all-seeing eye in the sky. That is a ton of civilizations that may reference this airship. Imagine you live in the 1600s and this thing is in the sky watching you. The all-seeing eye. Here are some French coins from the 17th century. With your great minds, provide a rational explanation. Flight history is really messed up. You have no idea how fabricated flight history is. Let me briefly explain. According to our historical narrative, the floating lantern was invented sometime in the 3rd century. Then get this, the first hot air balloon, using the same technology as the floating lantern, was invented in the mid-1700s. That is over a thousand years after the floating lantern was invented. Are we supposed to believe, it took flight engineers over 1000 years to make a slightly bigger floating lantern for people to stand on? Absolute insanity. And guess what? We have some book from the mid-1700s that describes a battle in the sky. In the year 103, on our calendar. Interesting information we have here. I'd like to clearly state this now. Not aliens, don't fall for that. It's more than likely just semi-regular people flying around bombing cities. This is serious ammo for the suppressed 1800s dirigible theories. What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.